shifters, entrepreneurs on the move, with your host, Amanda Barr, bringing you power-packed 15-minute conversations with entrepreneurs who share their stories of shifting in life and business to keep on the move. I am so looking forward to our call today. I've got a special lady on the line. She is definitely shifting and making things happen, especially for women out there. So women, listen in. I've got Courtney Titus, with, who's a women's holistic health coach. She teaches her clients about the ins and outs of their bodies and their hormones. Courtney specializes in helping women overcome PMS, acne, irregular periods, chronic UTIs, thyroid, and gut health issues. Welcome to the show, Courtney. Thank you so much, Amanda. I'm so happy to be here. Oh, I am so excited. You know, being a woman, these are definitely things that I think all of us are dealing with at some point in our <laughs> lives, um, and maybe too much. But I'd love to know a little bit about your backstory and, and how, how you got to this point um, in your career. Yeah, so um, I, I'm from the East Coast. Um, I went to school at Rutgers University in New Jersey, um, where I studied sociology and psychology. And after mm-hmm. graduating, like most uh, graduates, I'm kind of like, well, what do I do now? Um, <laughs> and I worked in corporate for a little while uh, for a hedge fund, and I found that that was not something I was interested in. And I saved up for two years and took a trip to Europe, and I backpacked for two months. And when wow. I was there, I realized, just how different their food system was. It was incredible to me. Like the refrigerators were smaller. They went to the market almost daily for fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, Everyone was walking and biking everywhere. It was very different than our culture. And I just started thinking like, why isn't this happening in my neighborhood? Why isn't this happening in my community? And I wanted to bring those ideals back to my lifestyle. And so at that point, when I got back from Europe, I started working for the YMCA, um, Mm. and I became the health and wellness director. So I was teaching group exercise classes, and I got certified through Live Strong, a cancer survivor's training program. And I was like, oh, maybe I can start working with cancer patients and cancer survivors on their nutrition. And so I went to a school called the um, Institute of Integrative Nutrition in New York. Uh, It's an online program. And then at that time, um, I started teaching nutrition classes to cancer survivors. And that was really cool and really impactful. And then at that time, um, I moved to L.A. I decided to move cross country. And when I got here, I kind of wasn't sure where I wanted to shift, so to speak, yeah. <laughs> um, where I wanted to go with my career, if I wanted to find a job or if I wanted to, like, uh, you know, start my business. And I did start my business, um, and I started working directly with a chiropractor um, and teaching his clients all about nutrition. And then um, I was looking more for some stability at that time, so I started working for Whole Foods Market and Medical Wellness Center. Um, Yes, Whole Foods has their own medical center here uh, on this east side in Glendale. I Um, know. It's crazy. I did not know that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So I was there for two years, um, and then unfortunately when Amazon bought Whole Foods, um, we got laid off, but I took a hormone course, and realizing that I really wanted to work with cancer patients um, initially, I was like, well, I don't have this experience. I have a mom, my mom survived breast cancer when I was in high school, college, but I didn't have that experience myself, and I found Mm. it really hard to relate to them, so I kind of wanted to find a niche that more related to an experience that I've had. And that's how I came across um, Nicole Jardim. She's known as the period girl. And I took her apprenticeship and uh, really took a deep dive into women's hormones and periods and fertility and all that different stuff. And that hit home for me because I've had some of my own issues, which we won't go into here, but um, it kind of just triggered me to change my lifestyle and then in turn want to help women to do that and overcome. And so that's pretty much how I've gotten here. I'm also in school for functional medicine to take everything to the next level. Um, So, yeah, Yeah. it's been quite the journey. (laughs) (laughs) But it's so, you know, I I have to say it's so beautiful to see how you've you've kind of 
been inspired and you've gone down that route and you've gotten certified, gotten trained, lived in it, did it, and then transitioned again and shifted again. And, um, you know, I'd love to hear like, kind of like, what was that for you maybe going through that process? What were some of those shifts? Because those are, you know, they're all kind of, they all dovetail except for the, the fund manager, <laughs> which, right. I, which I, which I love that that's in there. Cause you've got a business, you know, being in, being in business and being a health coach, you are in business for yourself. So you've got that as well, but, you know, tell us about some of those shifts and, and, and being an entrepreneur in this world. Yeah. I mean, the biggest shift, well, for me was moving from the East coast to the West coast. <laughs> that's um, a big shift. <laughs> I think that was the biggest shift, um, going from everything I know to a completely new environment. Um, and in that shift, it just taught me a lot about, you know, resilience. And I think when you're stepping into a business and into an entrepreneur space, you have to be very resilient and you have to be open to whatever life's going to come at you with. Um, and so taking a road trip from Connecticut to California, there was a lot of bumps in the road. And to me, it symbolized what my entrepreneurship experience was kind of going to be like, Um, you know, flat tires or the car overheating or, uh, you know, oh, we ran out of food today and we can't find a campsite for the night. And, you know, so you kind of, it taught me how to ebb and flow with whatever's going to come at me. And I think that really helped me step into this space of entrepreneurship when I got to L.A., um, and then getting here and starting to try to network and build your foundation all over again was kind of another shift for me um, yeah. because I didn't know anyone here. And so I'm I'm trying to find – and then I met you in my first year here in California. So that was yes. pretty cool. <laughs> um, That's awesome. And so I know. It's great into, meeting you. Yeah, I do have to say for those that are moving, because I, I, I'm a transplant as well to California – and I, I have to agree that, that that coming here and not having anybody where you grew up and your, your close network and, and really looking to connect with others, and I think it puts you in a different space. I think people get sometimes a little comfortable in their network, and this makes you get yeah. out there and you want to be friends and connect with others in, in such a new and refreshing way. And, and it was, and I know it was so fun to meet you, and I too was building at the time we met I was still building my my business too and and uh, it was a great connection yeah for sure and then actually your event inspired me so another shift I yeah. couldn't find my girl crew here I was really struggling to yeah. meet other women like-minded women and so I actually started a women's empowerment group uh, it's called WSW for women supporting women and I've been running it for three years now um, wow. and so, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I have to say that I believe the event was, uh, the little black dress, right? This was the one that we, this, was that the first time I met you or was that a different one? Deals and heels. <laughs> I think, uh, deals and heels. That's what it was. Yeah. Cause I yeah, worked we, for, um, that chiropractor down the street at the time. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. We, we've done some really great ones and that, those are fun. I'm so excited to hear that that inspired you to take it on and, and create a women's group that's been alive and growing. Yes, it has. It's, it's been such, it's, it's mostly friends and, you know, close acquaintances and things like that. But especially through this time with Corona and everything, it's been very um, helpful for people to just have an outlet and be able to talk yeah. through what they're feeling. And we always have a, a theme of the conversation and I always have specific questions I'm asking to get people to work through stuff. So yeah, that that event definitely inspired me to start my group. So thank you for that. <laughs> love it, love it. Now, I, I, you know, I know you're hitting on a few shifts. I would love to know, like, as you were diving into this world, I know sometimes, um, you know, there's an emotional element or there's a physical element to being a um, entrepreneur, and you're diving into the world of women. What was that like for you to kind of shift into this space with the hormones in the body? Was it a natural or or what was that like? Um, I know you said it, it was a natural fit for you. So maybe talk us through a little bit of that. I, I, I'm interested to know. Yeah. So that, um, it felt like a very natural shift. Um, I was working for Whole Foods and I went to an event um, called Sex and Cycles in LA. <laughs> and it was all about women and sexuality and periods. 
And uh, this woman I'd been following on Instagram for a while um, was there, and she spoke. And at the time, uh, working for Whole Foods, I was fat-free, plant-based vegan. And Mm. I still was having a lot of issues with my period. And so this woman, her name's Nicole Jardim, and I met her at this event, and we started talking, and she was like, that's the worst diet you could be doing for your hormones. And I was like, I thought I was doing everything right, you know, like I'm eating all the veggies and I'm exercising and I'm doing all the things, but I had very painful periods and really bad fatigue all the time. And so I started working with her and that's when I found out about her entrepreneur or her um, apprenticeship. And when I dived into that, that was another huge shift. I went from being fat free plant-based vegan for two years while working for Whole Foods to really shifting over to bio-individuality and realizing that, as a woman, you need healthy fats in your diet. Um, mm. A lot of women do need meat products because we're bleeding every month. We need really good iron sources, and meat iron is a lot more absorbable than plant iron. Um, so I learned a lot through that experience, and I found that um, I tend to be one that women or people kind of just gravitate toward me. I have, like, that presence. And I found it really easy to connect women together of all different, you know, backgrounds, of all different socioeconomic statuses, um, different careers, and really helping them connect on on that level of, okay, we're all in this together every month. We're all going through the same thing. And it shouldn't be be painful. And a lot of women I found don't understand their cycle. They don't know why they're feeling tired at this point and have more energy at this point. Um, they just don't, they're not informed. It's not stuff that we're taught about naturally. So right. it's been a really great transition for me. It, it felt very natural. Like I said, I struggled with um, certain hormone imbalances. Like I had some ovarian cysts and ended up in the hospital at one point with them. So I wow. feel like I've lived the journey. And yeah. now because I've lived it, I am an even better educator because I can empathize and also educate at the same time. Wow. I mean, I definitely, you are like a light source for women going through this stuff. And I hope those ladies that are out there listening today, if you are, you know, having, you know, would just want somebody to talk to and and having pain or going through some of this stuff or just like, nobody seems to understand. I hope you reach out to Courtney because she's going to be able to take you through and get you all taken care of. For sure. Yes, for sure. <laughs> and and I know that, um, you know, I just want to know, like, in terms of those out there that are taking on a new position or maybe they're entrepreneurs and they're, you know, maybe they don't have that, they don't feel like they have that natural fit or maybe they do, but they're they're struggling to keep moving. And obviously the, the passion of this podcast is to keep moving. And you've been one that no matter what, you kept moving. How and what what has been your, like, golden nugget to keep on the move? So this is something I specifically use with all of my clients also is writing out your why. So writing out directly why you are starting this business, why it's important to you, the impact that you want to have, and getting really emotionally connected to your purpose and what this is going to do to help other people And I have a why that I've written out, and I read it every morning. um, And I make sure that when I'm falling off or I'm feeling like I'm strongly failing forward (laughs) or just failing, (laughs) (laughs) that I reconnect with why I even started this um, to help me get refocused. And another huge thing around my why um, is I've recent, not recently, but in the past few years, gotten heavily into meditation um, and journaling. So I think that's that's the biggest nuggets that have helped me, but really connecting with the why. Why did you start this journey? Why is it important to you? And why is it really important that you keep moving uh, so that you can impact the world? Love it. Couldn't have said it any better. That's amazing (laughs) advice. (laughs) And I love that you actually read it every morning. I think there's a lot of times that um, myself included that I'll write these great things down and it stays on a piece of paper and I don't revisit it and having that continual feeding of what you're doing and why you're doing and and those action items like that's a great tip write it down read it every day keep filling yourself up I think that's awesome so Courtney what is the best way for our audience to get in touch because I know 
they they're gonna want to get in touch with you. So how do they do it? How do they get in touch with you? Um, so my website is getting um, a facelift in the next few months, but it is Courtney Titus C O U R T N E Y T I T U S dot com, and my Instagram is Why Not Wellness W H Y N O T W E L L N E S S. Um, I'm most active on Instagram. You can find me on Facebook under Why Not Wellness also. Um, but Instagram for me is where it's at at this time. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. I know you're an inspiration to me and now an inspiration, I know, to others. And, and keep doing that. I think you're touching so many lives. And your why is very, very powerful. Thank you so much, Amanda, for having me. I really appreciate this, and I hope whoever needs help does uh, sincerely reach out to me. (laughs) Awesome, awesome. Well, everybody out there, and us included, keep on the move. We hope you enjoyed the episode today. We appreciate each one of you for listening and hope you left inspired and motivated to keep on the move. If you think this episode might help or inspire someone else, please share. Don't forget to subscribe and keep in the loop to hear more incredible stories of entrepreneurs like yourself on the move. Thank you for our supporters, RTB Capital Group, Financial Powerhouse, CallCast, and Power Podcasting. Now, get out there and keep on the move.